Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. A telephone call was held today between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi. The two leaders exchanged Eid al Fattah greetings and good wishes, wishing the two brotherly countries and peoples, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns on the occasion and further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Abdullah. The second Ibn al Hussein of Jordan exchanged on the telephone Eid al Fitr greetings. The two monarchs wished the peoples and countries further progress and prosperity, and the Arab and Islamic nations well being and blessings. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa held a telephone call with UAE Vice President, Prime Minister, and Dubai ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum, and Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed al Nayan. They exchanged Eid al Fitr good wishes, wishing both countries and peoples, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns for further growth and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa exchanged cables of Eid al Fitr greetings with leaders of Gulf, Arab, and Islamic countries. His Majesty wished them good health and blessings and prayed for the end of the pandemic and protection of all against all harm. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakia Palace today Dr. Sheikh Mohammed Tahir bin Al Sheikh Suleiman Al Madani accompanied by a number of sheikhs, where they congratulated His Majesty the King on Eid al Fitr. They wished His Majesty many happy returns and prayed for his health and safety, wishing the kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity. His Majesty welcomed this and exchanged congratulations with the guests on the blessed occasion. He expressed appreciation for the role of religious scholars in serving Islam and Muslims around the world by spreading the values of virtue and tolerance, which strengthens communal ties. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the success of Bahrain Royal Guard Team in reaching the summit of Mount Everest. His Royal Highness noted that the Royal Guard Team's success will continue to serve as a motivation to further Team Bahrain's growing success. He commended the support extended by the National Security Advisor and Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness also extended his congratulations to the Bahrain Everest team. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, exchanged cables of Eid al Fitr greetings with leaders and Crown Princes of Gulf, Arab and Islamic countries. His Royal Highness wished them good health and blessings and prayed for the end of the pandemic and the protection of all against all harm. The Speaker of the Representatives Council of Isaiah Zanal participated virtually in the 31st Arab Inter-Parliamentary Union Extraordinary Session. She affirmed that the Kingdom, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, will remain supportive of the brotherly Palestinian people in regaining their legitimate rights in their land and establishing their independent state in accordance with the principle of the two-state solution and based on the Arab Peace Initiative and relevant international legitimacy decisions. Zanal affirmed that such condemned practices represent an erogenous form of violation against human rights, adding that they put the global conscience to the test to adhere to its duties from which all the divine religions emanate, as well as international charters and treaties and human rights principles. She stated that the attacks are a clear violation of international legitimacy decisions and that they are guaranteed to cause new dangerous levels of instability that affect peace 
and security. Zanal reiterated the rejection and categorical condemnation of the attacks on the worshippers at Al-Aqsa Mosque in this holy month by the Israeli authorities, as well as the provocations against the people of Jerusalem and eviction and seizure of their homes, especially in Sheikh Jarrah neighbourhood, in addition to the constant attempts to change the historical identity of the holy city of Jerusalem. Zanal highlighted the dangerous consequences of such acts that undermine the chances of reviving the peace process in the Middle East. And for more in this matter, we are joined by a member of the Council of Representatives, Ms. Shoazan Kamal. Hello, Mrs. Shoazan. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Can you tell us about the session and Bahrain's participation? Yeah. Well, at the outset, uh, I would like to emphasize that the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the King of Bahrain, may God protect him, is firm and supportive of the brotherly Palestinian people to restore their legitimate rights in their land and establish their independent state in accordance with the principle of the two-state solution and based on the Arab Peace Initiative and the relevant international legitimacy decisions. Uh, as I also declare the parliamentary uh, condemnation and rejection of the attacks on worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque, that includes provocations against the people of Jerusalem and the eviction and seizure of their homes uh, in, a, in, in an attempt to change the historical identity of Jerusalem. Uh, therefore comes the uh, participation of Her Excellency, the Parliament Speaker of the Council of Representatives, uh, in the 31st emergency conference of the Arab Parliamentary Union, which was held today, Wednesday, uh, through visual communication technology, to discuss the uh, circumstances that uh, Al-Quds al-Sharif, Al-Aqsa uh, Mosque, is going through, and what the Palestinian brothers are exposed to. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Her Excellency emphasized the Bahraini position of Arab solidarity with the Palestinian cause. Uh, I would also like to refer to an important point that Her Excellency has uh, also mentioned in her speech during the uh, conference. It's that the stability of the humanitarian, legal and security situation in the city of Jerusalem and all the cities, villages and neighborhoods of Palestine would lead to the stability of the situation in the region as a whole and prevent more violence, tension and escalation as this will help uh, create appropriate solutions to the Palestinian issue. Uh, in addition to that, it will promote comprehensive peace. Uh, the, the conference also issued uh, a final statement expressing its uh, condemnation and uh, denunciation of the Israeli practices against uh, Islamic and Christian uh, uh, sanctities and uh, against the Palestinian people. Thank you. And that was a member of the Council of Representatives, Ms. Shorsan Kamal. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain will remain in line with all Arab and Islamic countries in supporting all of the nation's just causes, the foremost upon which is the Palestinian cause. He said that Bahrain's position under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa maintains its position on Palestine and continues to call on the Israeli government to prevent its forces from attacking worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque. Asala called on the international community to take a just stance on the matter and meet its humanitarian and moral obligations. The Moon Sighting Panel convened yesterday at the SCIA headquarters to receive news and testimonies confirming the birth of a Shawal Crescent. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, announced that the first day of Eid al-Fitr will be on Thursday. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated virtually in the meeting of the Council of the Arab League in the extraordinary session at the ministerial level, with the participation of senior officials and heads of delegations of the participating countries and the Secretary General of the Arab League. During the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech in which he noted that the world followed with concern the recent developments in Jerusalem as a result of the Israeli settlers' aim to evacuate Jerusalemites from their homes in Al Sheikh Jarrah and the Israeli forces' attacks on worshippers in Al Aqsa Mosque during the month of Ramadan, which comes in contradiction with the resolutions of the international legitimacy and international law 
and is inconsistent with the values of tolerance and coexistence and peace. He further called on the Israeli government to respect international law and fulfil its international obligations, affirming that Bahrain has expressed strong condemnation of the Israeli forces' assault on worshippers in Al-Aqsa Mosque, where the settlers sought to confiscate the property of the Jerusalem lights in Al-Sheikh Jarrah and demanded an end to these attacks against the people of Jerusalem. The minister also expressed Bahrain's solidarity with the brotherly Palestinian people, affirming the kingdom's unequivocal position and just and lasting peace in the region will not be achieved unless the Palestinian people obtain their full legitimate rights to establish an independent state, with East Jerusalem as its capital, in accordance with the international legitimacy of the two-state solution and the Arab Peace Initiative. He pointed out that the Kingdom calls on the international community to shoulder its humanitarian and moral responsibilities in protecting the brotherly Palestinian people from all Israeli violations. It also calls for an end to the escalation and violence and the harnessing of international efforts to achieve peace and stability in the region. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to allocate 5,000 housing units to beneficiaries, the Minister of Housing, Abbasim Al Hamar, announced that the Ministry continues to allocate units at Al Bahar project to citizens. He stated that Al Bahar housing project is one of the Ministry's leading projects in the Southern Governorate, and that it helps expedite the allocation process in the Kingdom. Alhamma affirmed that the support of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, has accelerated the distribution process, following the advanced completion rates of various projects. He said that Al Bahar project has reached a 99% completion rate, and that this, aside from its excellent location, includes several services and facilities. The Minister added that the project will provide many applicants from the waiting list from the Southern Governorate with housing units. As for the government's plan to allocate 5,000 units to citizens, Al Hama noted that the Ministry holds meetings on a daily basis with those concerned from the project's directorate to expedite the allocation process. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Board Chairman of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, BTEA, Zed Ben Rashid Aziani, paid an inspection visit to the venue of the new Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Centre, BIECC, project in Sakir. He was updated on the latest developments in implementing the project and directed to remove all obstacles to ensure its completion as scheduled for the end of the second quarter of 2022. He praised the efforts of the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning for its supervisory role, supporting the implementation of a strategic project. The Minister affirmed that the project is one of the biggest ones carried out by BTEA and will provide an exemplary venue to host international events. He added that the centre will further attract the organising companies and exhibitions and conferences to hold their international events. He noted that this will further promote the tourism sector in the Kingdom so as to diversify revenues and achieve the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments announces opening mosques and Eid al fitr locations for Eid prayer according to the same regulations and measures followed for Juma and Tarawih prayers during Ramadan to protect the health of all individuals. The Ministry announced the following regulations to hold Eid prayer. Banning entry to mosques without vaccination or recovery proof via the Be Aware app. Allocating and announcing mosques to be open for Eid prayers by the Directorates of Endowments. The Endowments Directorates must notify every governorate with the names of the mosque to be open for Eid prayers to ensure coordination with relation to precautionary measures. Mosques are to be open 45 minutes before prayer and must be closed 20 minutes following the prayer. Eid prayers at workers' residence and outdoor areas must be coordinated by companies and a kathim must be sent to the Endowments Directorate. The sermon must not exceed 10 minutes. The translation of sermons and gathering are not permitted following the prayer. Women and children under 15 cannot attend the prayers. Mosques and women prayer locations shall be prepared for men only. Mass transportation of worshippers to mosques and mosques for Eid prayer is prohibited. The Kingdom today approved for emergency use the new single dose Sputnik Light vaccine produced by the Gamalea National Centre for Epidemiological and Microbiology Research at the Ministry of Health of the Russian Federation. 
The decision to approve the new Sputnik vaccine and allow its use was based on a thorough analysis of data provided by the manufacturing company. The National Health Regulator Authority, the NHRA, undertook review and evaluation process of the data on the vaccine, including the evaluation of efficacy data, safely through the clinical trials and vaccine manufacturing quantity and product stability. The NHRA also took the opinion of the Clinical Research Committee, academics and physicians responsible for approving clinical trials. The new Sputnik Light vaccine uses the first dose of the previously approved Sputnik V vaccine with a high efficacy level and proven effectiveness against all new strains of COVID-19, evident during laboratory testing at the Gamalea National Centre. The NHRA confirmed that based on the approval issued today, the Ministry of Health will commence import procedures. By permitting the emergency use of Sputnik Light, Bahrain has approved the sixth vaccine for emergency use following Sinopharm, Pfizer-BioNTech, AstraZeneca, Johnson and Sputnik V. The King of Bahrain is committed to protecting the health and safety of all citizens and residents. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that over 800,000 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while more than 600,000 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 14,836, with 875 recoveries, 1,732 registered new cases and seven deaths. 670 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 1,050 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. The King of Bahrain prepared a medical equipment and oxygen shipment to support India's efforts to combat COVID-19 out of solidarity with India and readiness to support international efforts to combat COVID-19. Indian Ambassador to the King of Bahrain, Apeyush Srivastava, expressed thanks and appreciation for such effort, highlighting the deep rooted relations between the two countries. You know, this is a global pandemic and robust global cooperation is absolutely essential uh, if we want to defeat this pandemic. Many countries have seen severe waves in the past and India is going through the one right now. Let me place on record our gratitude and thanks to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the Government of Bahrain for Kingdom's solidarity, support and assistance in terms of supply of oxygen, medical equipment and logistics as well as for taking care of Indian community in Bahrain in these difficult times. I also take this opportunity to convey our thanks to Indian and Bahraini associations as well as members of Indian community who have come forward to join this fight, uh, collective fight against this pandemic.